<laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, what is the chances your next turn on the spinner will result in a red? Wow. <laughs> You're just trying to distract everybody. Yes, I, do. I feel like Maggie should definitely go first. Okay, so we've we've got that table up there that has an experiment done. So this is experimental probability. It doesn't say that, but it's supposed to be kind of given because there's numbers there. Oh, are you trying to get out paper and stuff? Oh, do you want me to call on somebody else first? Yeah. All right. Call on Okay. So don't you, well, we have to add all of them and then um, it'd be 10 out of whatever they add to that. 50. Okay, 50. So it'd be 10 out of 50. Perfect. So 10 out of 50 because 10 times it was red, 50 times total. Um, you can write 10 out of 50. You can write one out of five or you can write 20%. All three of those answers that I would accept. Do you guys want me to go over how to change it to a percent or do you not even care? No, because it doesn't matter, right? I'm like, you don't have to, yeah. correct. Okay. okay. Yep. I can, if you want to ignore it, you can ignore it. I'll open up the calculator for you. I, I'm just only thinking if there might be a question where, where the numbers might be written in percents or something, but I don't think there is one. Uh, okay, so if we've got 10 out of 50, on the calculator, you do 10 divided by 50, and it's going to give you a decimal. To change a decimal to a percent, you multiply by 100. So then that'd be the 20%. Um, some of you, if you have a scientific calculator, some of them have a button on there specifically for percents, so it might do it for you automatically. But on the graphing calculators, that's how you do it. Oh, uh, that minimized the wrong one. That's cool. And right, let me get the back. There we are. Oh, yeah, this is one where you just type it in. Okay. Um, okay, Maggie, now you're ready. Yeah. What is the theoretical probability of rolling a two? on a six-sided number cube, AKA a dice. Okay, how come it's one out of six? Because that number only goes one time. Perfect. Um, a two is one of the six numbers. Correct. Um, do you wanna call the next person or should I do like a, do you, guys, do you guys like random number generators better? Or is that worse? You want to, oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That sounded like a revenge call, to be honest. Okay, how come you think it's three out of six? Perfect, there are three odd numbers out of six numbers total. Oh, do you want me to re repeat that? Oh, okay. <laughs> it was. Uh, you could also write one half. But you'll transfer. Yep, correct. So on a piece of paper, draw a tree diagram to show the results of rolling a six sided standard number cube and then spinning a spinner with four equal parts. Then take a picture of it. So partly this is on here to see if you can get that to work. Um, what you're supposed to do. Do you guys want me to draw a tree, what that actually looks like? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. <clears throat> After that, I would like you guys to try to get this to work correct. Your Chromebook cameras should be good enough to take this picture. Um, let me open up Smart Notes. Nope. Okay, so a, a number, not a number tree. Um, probability tree or whatever it was called, tree diagram. What was the first thing it said? Roll a dice. Okay, so if you're drawing a tree diagram and the first thing you do is roll a dice, that means there's gonna be six lines coming off of 
well, out of a single spot. And those six lines represent the six things that can happen on a dice. So one, two, this is really hard writing with a mouse. And then I think the next thing was a four-sided spinner. Yeah, okay. So after you roll a dice, the tree shows you the possible things that can happen. So if you roll a one, the next thing that can happen is you can have a spinner with four equal occurrences. Um, I think on the test, I was more specific. Like, I think I said like red, blue, green or something like that. So I, I don't even know what I should put for that. Um, spinner one, spinner two, I can't write. Spinner three, spinner four. And then each of these six numbers is gonna have four fingers coming off of it. And this is a tree diagram of that situation that was just described. Um, I'm positive on the test, I picked smaller numbers so that you wouldn't have to have so many branches because it gets difficult to draw especially since the first one had six. Okay, if you guys can, use your Chromebook to take a picture of what you just drew and upload that. And then I, after we're done with this practice test, I'm gonna go through and check to see if everybody's worked. How? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I thought you could click the button and it might open up your camera for you though. I can't test it on mine. Um, S1, S2, S3, S4. Now, if I if I give you colors, like you can do R, B, G, like red, blue, green. So they just label that for all of them? Yeah. Okay. Or if it's a coin, if it's a coin, you would do like H, T. Yeah. So you guys drew it on a piece of paper. So it doesn't let you click the upload and then open the camera. You have to do the camera first. Okay. So on the, the little search bar, you can just search camera. And it should let you take a photo and then it saves it to your Chromebook. Yeah. The, the only reason is like when we do our homework, sometimes there's too much information. And if you hold a piece of paper too far away from the Chromebook, it's like impossible to read. But these tree diagrams are usually small enough where you can just get it close enough to the Chromebook and it comes out okay. Uh, the, this, like the start menu. The <laughs> The lower left, the lower left corner. Oh, and then search camera. What you were in the picture or something? Can you make search a camera? No. No. Okay, what's the problem though? I'm trying to take a picture of that. Why is it you? I took it. Yeah. Why don't you have to go in the room? Oh, you you normally would. So the problem with that one that we just had was you weren't told any info about the spinner. So if it was like a coin, you would put H and T on each one of the fingers. <laughs> How or now? How? So did you take the picture already? Yeah. So now click the button that says choose upload or something like that. There should be a blue button in the middle. It shows up different on each device. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a screenshot yet. Yeah. <laughs> Are you having trouble choosing where the camera is? 
there's probably a button to like go up a level or something. So each one of these two practice tests has a question like this, for, or like the one we just did for you to practice uploading something. And then the actual test has it as well. Because <clears throat> I'm hoping by the time you get to the test, it won't be an issue for you to upload. Um, I don't remember who went. Oh, okay. You guys definitely remember. <clears throat> if you can, can you pick somebody over there so that we don't just like use up every single person in this half of the room? Okay. Jackson. Okay, Jackson <clears throat> says determine how many possibilities there are when spinning a spinner with seven colors and rolling three dice. So there's different ways you can approach this. Um, one, you could draw a tree diagram if you wanted to figure that out that way. Okay. Perfect. So this one, we've got two independent things. So we multiply the number of possibilities together. So seven times three. So if you wanna write notes on something, you know, like on this particular question, <clears throat> the notes would be to multiply the possibilities. Um, so this is the start of the ones where I started changing the wording because when we did this last time, the wording confused some people. Um, so it says answer all these questions. Does the order matter in this situation? Why I I deleted I deleted these words. So on the practice quiz tomorrow, practice test tomorrow, it'll just start by saying, would this be a permutation or combination? And that's all you're answering. So I'm fine with us only answering that question. So a team of 13 basketball players needs to choose a captain and a co-captain. You're basically just supposed to answer is this permutation or combination? If you wanna answer why you can, does it matter what order that they're picked? Like if we choose two people in here and one is supposed to be captain, one is supposed to be co-captain, would it matter if we reverse them around? Would it be considered different? Yeah, so because it would be considered different and they're not a group. This is a permutation. That's all you're supposed to answer. We're gonna have this same question and actually be asked to find the number answer in a bit. So here's a separate situation. Uh, do, does anybody want me to go back so you can write down the situation in your notes? Okay, so this situation, there are 63 applicants for three computer programming positions. So it's phrased this way because they're kind of a group of three. They're not considered different. So when you're choosing the three people, the order isn't gonna matter. They're kind of a group because they're not different. So this would be a combination. Okay, now we're going back. I didn't set this test up. Um, I suppose I could rearrange the order of the question. So <clears throat> either way, now we're going back to this one. What is the size of the sample space? Which sample space means how many different ways? So it's, it's kind of the different wording for the same thing. A team of 13 basketball players needs to choose a captain and co-captain. What would we put in the calculator to get this answer? Um, Jackson, you can call on the next person. Caleb, okay. Caleb, what are you gonna type in the calculator to get the answer to this one? So the answer is 13? Perfect. On your calc, I'm, I'm going to erase this in a second, but in your notes, you would do 13 P2 because there are 13 players, permutation, and you're choosing two spots. And um, oh, I do have a calculator. I forgot. I was going to say I don't have a calculator on me. Um, so math. 
probability two. Yep, you can certainly take your calculator out and practice this again to get used to it if you want. Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Really? Oh, sure, why don't you bring that up here? See if I can get it to, I honestly, I don't know if it's not working. I doubt I could do anything at all, but. <laughs> Is this the one you've been trying to open? Or did you open the one that's a calculator? That's okay, because that, that's like the normal Chromebook calculator. So when you, no, that's right. When you open this one, it should look like the one I've got on the screen. I certainly could do that again. Is that what you're going to ask? Yeah. Sure, will do. Yep, I'll just start over. So to get to the permutation and combination button, we're going to hit the math button on the left. And then the fourth column that says probability, I'm going to hit the right arrow to get over to there. Wait, is that the same one where like actually make permutation? Oh, no. Um, no, no. You type in the number, you type in question, yeah. and you go to the PID. On the right hand side of your calculator is a probability button. And I'm going to click two for the permutation and then do 13 and two. So 156 is my answer. And then if you're using your own calculator, um, I can't help you with it during the test, but I definitely can help you with it anytime up to then. So that, that's why I want you to kind of definitely know how to use the one you're going to use. Okay, so here's the programmer one. 28 applicants for three computer programming positions. Caleb, um, who's gonna help us answer this question? Garrett? Okay, Garrett? Uh, okay. Perfect, that's what I was trying to ask. So the permutation or combination, we need to use the C button. So number three. Uh, 28 people, they're picking three spots. So 28 C3. So if you guys are writing notes to yourself, that would be definitely be what you'd put in your notes. Um, I have this practice test set up so that you can open it again afterwards to look at the questions and stuff. Uh, so 3276. What is the size? of the sample space of this situation. The batting order for nine players on a 19 person team. Okay, so now we just actually have to like do the problem. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, was number nine 3,276? Yep. Garrett, do you have somebody you wanna call on? Okay. What, uh, what would we do to find this answer? So it's going to be a permutation or combination, one of those two. Basically, we need to figure out, does the order of the things we're picking matter or not? So if, if we've got a batting order for baseball, can people bat in any order or does there have to be certain order? Mm -hmm. Certain order, oh. which might totally matter if you know baseball or not. <clears throat> um, I, I, th I think the test and the practice test tomorrow will have a baseball question as well. Um, I guess I never even thought about that. You guys are more than welcome to ask while you're taking the test if there's, if they're like, you don't know about a topic or something, feel free to ask. But yes, so a batting order on a team, you have to go in a certain order every time. They, uh, they don't let you, just randomly choose who's going to go up to bat. <clears throat> so this one does have order. So is it a permutation or combination? Yeah. So you're going to do 19 P nine.
And that's a huge answer. Shoot. Oh, see, some of your calculators are going to give that number answer, I bet, and some won't. Um, no, it's not 3.35. It's so let's see, two, four, six, eight. So it's three, three, five, two, two, one, two, eight, six, four, zero. So this this E10 is scientific notation for times 10 to the 10th. So the decimal place would be 10 spots to the right. Uh, you can just write this answer though, like I'm okay with that. Because it kind of depends on your calculator. So if you write that, that's fine. Otherwise, the otherwise three three five. I already forgot too many numbers. Two two one two. Eight six four zero. Okay. Wait, do you put it to say three point three five? Three point three five is completely wrong. 3.35 times 10 to the 10th is a huge number. So if you say 3.35, that's just like three. Okay. So that there's a big difference between the, the two things you write. So when we're doing the permutation and the combination, or the numbers, does the bigger number go first? Yes. So, um, it's only going to matter if your answer is too big to fit on the screen of the calculator. So I would say then 3.35 e. Perfect. It's it's only if your answer is too big to fit on your screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we add the times earlier? If you just write three point three five, I'll mark it wrong. No, I'm saying you no, know, like the whole the whole like decimal, but you don't put the e ten at the very end. Is that going to be wrong? That's still the same thing as three point three five. So wait. So for your answer, that three point three five two two one two eight six four, and then you're done. Zero. Oh. And that's like for the times ten to the fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So I I can tell this is definitely really screwing you guys up. Um. If the number is too big to fit on your screen, which it isn't on this calculator, so I don't know why it's writing E10. But like the smaller scientific calculators, sometimes it'll write the full number and then have like an arrow for you to move over. Like did that calculator show the whole answer? Yeah. Okay, so you would just write that. Um, if the answer is too, too many numbers to fit on the screen, they write it as scientific notation. Oh, can't highlight. They write it as scientific notation. And I don't know why, but the calculators don't write times 10 to the whatever power. They write E, this is like engineering notation. Oh, oh times 10 to the 10th. Yeah, that's kind of what I was asking. Do we add the I would understand both of them. It matters if you write the times 10 to the 10th. Do that or don't? Do that. What I was trying to say is these calculators don't write it like that. <laughs> so the only way I would mark this wrong is if you write 3.35 and that's it. Every other version would be totally good. And this is only going to matter on numbers that are too big for your calculator. And I don't remember if there's an answer like that on the test or not. I don't think there is, but we could find, I will find out. <clears throat> but that's partly the reason we're doing these practice ones so we can find things out. Okay, a group of 25 people are going to run a race. Oh, I remember this question. I didn't like this one. Um, this one says the top six finishers advance to the finals. The reason I didn't like this question is because this one is talking about a race. So everybody automatically will assume first place, second place, third place, whatever. But usually in races, they have heats before you get to the finals. And so something like this is 
they take the top six as a group and put them in the finals. So this one, this one says the top six finishers advance to the finals. There is no order to the one through six. So the one through six is a group. So because of that, this one is a combination. I believe if I remember right on the practice test tomorrow and the real test, I tried to word it to save if the places would matter or not. So this one would be 25 C six, whatever that answer is. One seventy seven thousand one hundred. Thank you. And it it won't matter if you put a comma or not. Because I'm I'm just going to go through every question and look at your answers regardless. So if it marks it wrong or right, I'm going to look at them anyway. So it won't matter if you use commas or not. Oh, do you want me to go back to that one? 177, 100. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Grace, I think you went last. Is there somebody you're going to call on? Nora? Everybody always goes basically one desk away. Okay. I don't know what the answer is. What did you do? What did you do to get the answer? Perfect. So you did a permutation because the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer are considered separate. Yeah. So eleven P four. You said it was twelve. No, oh. I was just, you were just randomly throwing twelve out there. All right. Oh. Oh, it is question twelve. Yes. So eleven P four would be seventy nine twenty. Okay, excellent. Second to last question. Oh, 11 P4. And the answer is 7920. Is it for P? Uh, Permutation. Yeah, 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 but I remember. 11 4. <laughs> Chair Buggin. Is it one of those rocky ones? Yeah. Yes. Okay, question 13, I'm going to have you do on your own. And I'm going to look through to see what you answered. It's in your own words, describe the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability. And then we'll do 14 together because I forgot to rearrange the questions. I was gonna put this as 13. It says, determine the size of the sample space, number of possibilities when you order from this old menu. So this is like McDonald's first menu. Yeah, I forgot to change the order of the questions. So you basically have a choice between a hamburger or a cheeseburger. There is only one side menu, which is French fries. But there's a whole bunch of different kinds of drinks. You have milk, chocolate milk. Uh, oh, that's his chocolate milkshake. Strawberry milkshake, vanilla milkshake, root beer, orangeade, Coca-Cola, or coffee. I was just, all I'm looking for on this one is for somebody to tell me how to figure out how many possibilities you can order. Yeah. So you, you multiply them, correct. Two, two times one, and I, is there eight drinks? Okay, so yeah, 16, two times one times eight. This was the original McDonald's menu. Yeah, I know, <clears throat> 15 cents and 19 cents. And now it's like $6 for just the burger part. And then I would like you guys to answer 13 on your own. Type in what you think the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability is. And what I'll do is I'll go through and kind of look at your answers and I'll leave feedback on it to. 
Uh, 16. It was two times one times eight. Because there were eight drinks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. The and, and I'm I'm surprised nobody asked me about this one by now. This this only takes into account that you're forced to order one from each thing. Like there's actually more possibilities because like you don't have to order a side, you don't have to order a drink. So it there's all sorts of possibilities. This is saying you have to order one of each. Um, I think I just closed mine. Correct. Two times one times eight. Now that was the only official work we were supposed to do today. So you guys should have it kind of all done together. I suppose I should stop recording. Ready?